Meet 10-week-old Jamie. A wonderful, normal, healthy baby girl and just so precious to Mary and George. You know, she's a great sleeper, a great eater. Are you loving being normal? Yep, yep. My breasts are very happy at my kneecaps. <laughs> um, and poo. Poo's never been more exciting. Mm. Nappy changing would be a complete joy for you. So to speak. Well, let's not go too far. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we're happy, but we're not crazy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> not yet. Come here, give me a kiss. Uh, give me a kiss. Uh, let's get a burp out. In the decade Mary Custis and George Betzis have been married, they've longed to be a family. Now, they are. There That's it is. is. Yay! The <laughs> we got one. Have you looked at Mary and marvelled at how she's become this mum and how she's caring for Jamie? I always knew she would be um, a great mum. But there's a certain kind of lightness to her now. And, um, and there's a real sparkle and, you know. How's George as a dad? Champion. Sexes him up a bit, <laughs> I've got to say. There's something very appealing in uh, watching a brute of a man be so gentle and cute with a little look-alike. There's something really appealing in that. Yeah. Oh, it's OK. It'll come up. And they've every right to be light-hearted after so much pain in their quest to become parents. <laughs> My no one's perfect but me attitude has left me on the shelf. The proverbial shelf. By myself. As Effie, Mary Custis knows how to get a laugh. And so like Greece, I'm looking for a bailout. But behind the one-liners, we didn't know the battle she and George had been going through. Multiple IVF attempts in Australia were unsuccessful or ended in miscarriages. And we were trying again and again and again and again. And I won't repeat myself, but again. So, with equal amounts of perseverance and desperation, they turned to a world-leading fertility clinic in Greece, which specialised in the use of donor eggs. At the beginning of 2011, the then 46-year-old Mary was told she was pregnant with triplets, and the risks were high. She needed to be counselled, and she was informed about all the risks to her health and to the baby's health. And then, possibly the most cruel thing was offering her a choice. Dr VJ Roach, Mary's Sydney obstetrician, told her the chances of all three embryos surviving were virtually nil. So the decision was made to sacrifice two of the embryos to give the third the greatest hope. But how do you sit there and even understand that or, or take that in? You become like a zombie. You, you just sit in there listening to information, thinking, is this actually happening? This can't be happening. Initially, the surviving embryo did well, and the 19-week scan revealed Mary and George were having a girl. They called her Stevie. But at 22 weeks, Mary went into labour. Dr Roach was again delivering bad news. He examined me and said she's coming down the birth canal, she's still alive, but she won't make it through. You know, her lungs aren't developed enough. And, you know, this is what you're going to inherit. And the baby will be stillborn. And, you know, I went into labour. And, um, and then she was there, you know. All 490 grams of her, she was exquisite. And George, how are you at this stage? Oh, I was devastated. And I, I just couldn't believe what I, I'd just seen. 
and I just thought this is this is unfair. No one should be put through this. And it happens every day, but when it's you, you just think, boy, this is too much. You know, we'd gone from none to two to three to one to none. That is cruel. So cruel. None of that, none of that is what you imagine. The room where Stephen was born. So... For two days after their daughter's birth and death, Mary and George stayed with her in the hospital. I remember, you know, saying to him, Georgie, c come and see her, she's so beautiful, you know, it'll be okay, just come and hold her. And he said, you know, he said, I can't, I just can't do it. And then I remember looking across in the midst of me kissing Stevie and looked across and he had, he was cradling his head. He was sitting down like cradling his head. I mean, at that point, my courage had deserted me completely. I couldn't hold Stevie the way Mary was holding her. I just... That was just a step too far. I, I just found my, my knees were buckling and I, I just thought I need to hold my body upright and I don't know how she's doing this. To my darling daughter, Stevie, Mary found incredible strength in writing about her loss, a book and a letter to Stevie. As the Greeks say, the world is big. Find your place in it, my darling, wherever that might be, and know that you will forever be adored, loved and remembered, your mother. Coming up, Mary's tears of joy. It was, um... Um, the most... A beautiful baby girl. And one more surprise. Would you do it again? Well, it's funny you should say that, George. Could we? That's next on 60 Minutes. This is the most longed-for baby bump you can imagine. And Mary and George are both glowing. Ours was still a massive journey in between a huge loss and a huge win. Was there part of you that almost wouldn't let you believe that this was possible, that this was real, that this could have a happy ending? We didn't assume that we would get the ha happy ending. I mean, many people don't, and we were looking like we were not gonna get it. I still went back to Greece on three occasions, I still did six other attempts after Stevie to get Jamie. That's a lot. That's more than most people do to get one child yeah. the first time they've, they've done IVF. And yet, I'm sure I've done over 20 IVFs. I don't even dare to find out the amount. Given everything you'd been through, why did you have that conviction that, that you shouldn't give up, that you should just give it one more go? I think experiences like this, uh, you discover your limits and you test your limits. And, um, and we didn't want to have any regrets later to say that we didn't fully exhaust every ounce of our energy and being to get there. How have you been feeling? Yeah, good. It's been lots of kicking. For all that they'd been through, Mary and George finally got what they desperately wanted. A happy, trouble-free pregnancy. Mary is healthy and well, and there's one baby, and the baby's grown normally. For Mary and George, it was an anxious nine months. But right on schedule at Sydney's North Shore Private Hospital, it was time for Jamie's arrival. And the 25th of November last year, became the happiest day of their lives. He's coming out. Like any proud dad-to-be, George pointed the video camera while Dr VJ Roach and his team got down to work. OK, 
Within a few minutes, Jamie was born, and Mary and George were overcome with emotion. And this time, it was for all the right reasons. Oh, it was just, um, it was just awe, you, you know, just wonder. Uh, it was, you know, the most beautiful thing I'd ever seen. And Mary, your reaction was simply beautiful. You were overwhelmed. Yeah. It was, um... You know, I'd been sort of toying with, you know, where do I put the Stevie experience in all of this? And, you know, you feel a loyalty to, to pain. You know, it impacts that much that you feel a real loyalty to, to it because it's changed you, it's altered you forever. But I knew that this was not the same as the last time. And, and when she appeared, it was, it was such an overwhelming feeling of proof of all that effort, all that not giving up was finally there personified in this prize. And um, she was just adorable. And it was just the most um, intravenous um, feeling of, yes, it happened. It actually happened. It's beautiful. And that moment was also one of pure relief. Only then did Mary and George realise the constant anxiety they'd been living with in their decade-long battle to become parents. I had nothing to worry about anymore. It's like the last decade we've been sitting in a room with the lights out mm. and someone just came and flicked the switch to on. And then you go, ah, oh, that's better. <laughs> Thank you. How are you? Good kiss. How are you? No, I'm really well. Oh, I'm so happy for you. She was gorgeous. She came out breech. Mm. Bum first, Greek style. Legs high up in the air. And then they turned her around and she was so cute. I was lucky enough to visit Mary and meet little Jamie just an hour after she came into the world. We're happy for you. So many people are happy for you, Mary. Well done. I'll tell you, there's nothing good comes out of giving up. I mean, if I'd given up this, we wouldn't have got to this. It's beautiful. In the same hospital, in the same ward where they lost Stevie, Mary and George can finally and simply be happy parents to a beautiful, healthy little baby. I think she has my nose. <laughs> and Mary's mum, Fanny, is the proudest of grandmothers. Fanny, how special is this moment? She's a kukla. A kukla. She's beautiful. <laughs> She's, She's stunning. adorable. Look at her. <laughs> That's what we're dreaming of, a comeback. <laughs> Jamie is now sleeping, feeding, and making all the right sounds. She's a content, gorgeous, fluffy, plump, um, little princess. <laughs> glory, glory to South Sydney. A little princess without a care in the world. Except for one thing. Down the track, she's going to have to referee the natural rivalry between Sydney-born George and Melbourne-born Mary. Good old Collingwood forever. <laughs> they know how to Don't play the game. They know how to win a premiership too. Don't listen to your mother. Here's the big question. Would you do it again? Well, it's funny you should say that because my mother's like, 
Next time we go to Greece, we go back to Pentos and we chuck another one in. And I'm like, uh, yeah, yeah, I like the way you say it, it's like that easy. And my mother-in-law said, yeah, surely, you know, are we up for another? Um, I don't know whether we could do it again. I, I, I can't see it, George, could we? He's I thinking. Don't I don't know. Yeah. I think we're pretty happy right now. Yeah. yeah. Hello, I'm Tara Brown. Thanks for watching. To keep up with the latest from 60 Minutes Australia, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can also download the Nine Now app for full episodes and other exclusive 60 Minutes content.